Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. I do the premium problems on my Patreon for two bucks and you can join my Discord. I'm building a community here. If you message me, I try to respond to everyone. This is Fine Pivot Index. Uh, this is an easy problem. Very easy. One of the easiest on Lee Code, I think. Given an array of integers, nums, write a method that returns the pivot index of this array. You might have heard of pivot if you know what quicksort is. If you don't, they give you a definition of what pivot is in this case here. We define the pivot index as the index where the sum of the numbers to the left of the index is equal to the sum of the numbers to the right. If no index exists, we should return negative one. If there's multiple pivots, we should return the leftmost one. Okay, great. So what this is telling us is, let's look at an example. We give it an array of numbers in this method that we're implementing. We're trying to find the pivot where the pivot is, you know, in this case, it says index three. It's an index. So zero, one, two, three. This is the pivot in this case. And they're saying the pivot is the index where the numbers to the left, all these numbers summed, added up, is equal to the numbers to the right, summed and added up. So we could see the numbers to the left, seven plus three plus one is 11 and six plus five is 11. So that is correct. Okay. In this case, there's nothing. There's no pivot, so negative one. Now, how do we do this? Well, you should think it's pretty easy, honestly. It's not too bad. Like, let's think about this. Like, if you look at these numbers, like, how are we going to, if just looping through, like, you can't just go, okay, one plus eight is eight, how, how, and then you can't just check if that's equal to this, right? We don't know anything about these numbers. So, I mean, you could do a double for loop, so you could, like, loop through each number and then, like, loop through the array again and check, but, like, that's pretty stupid when you, the obvious thing is probably just get a sum first, right? So, you, you want to sum all the elements. So, you loop through once. That's just a linear loop. So, you loop through, and you go, okay, 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 3 is 11, plus 6 is 17, plus 5, 22, plus 6, 28. Boom. You got 28. You know the sum of it now. Okay, let's loop through it again now. We already have the sum is 28. Let's keep a left sum now. Left sum is zero. And let's check the current element if total sum minus left sum minus current element is equal to left sum, and then that will give us the answer. So we just do, okay, let's check this. Not, let's check. We have zero. This is the main condition right here. I don't know if I have to explain this to you, but total sum minus left sum minus nums of i equals left sum. If this happens, we found the right index. Because if 28 minus 0, which is the sum right now, minus 1, so 27, if 27 is equal to 0, well, then that means that all of the numbers to the right are equal to the numbers to the left. But that's not true. That would mean there is nothing here, right? If we saw this 1, and there was a zero here, then that would make sense because the left sum is zero. The numbers to the left of one equal to the number of the right, you know, like in this case, right? You know, like whatever, but I don't know. That was a bad example, but what am I talking about here? Um, whatever, dude. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to check the current number. The current number isn't a part of the left or the right sum. So you're going to Check the current number first, and you're going to say, if the left and right aren't equal, then you're going to add it on. So you're going to say 1, and then you're going to say 8, and you're going to check this condition every time, and you're going to say, okay. Um, then you're going to say 11, and then you're going to say, okay. Total sum minus 11 minus 6. So 28 minus 11, 28 minus 11 is equal to what? Is equal to... 19 or something like that, maybe, no, 17, right, 17, okay, and then 17 minus 6 is equal to 11, is that is equal, you know, and if 11 is equal to 11, then the left and right are equal, because we know the total, we subtract what we've seen, and we subtract the current number, the current number isn't part of the sum that we've seen, and then we know what's on the right, it's pretty straightforward, I'm not sure if I'm the best at explaining it, but, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Now we'll code it. I shouldn't have made this video this long. Either way, anyways, I already messed up a few times. I always mess up. And I gotta stop. I gotta get over it. I feel like everyone 
you know, let me know below if other people don't mess up at all. I mean, am I, am I just in the worst, like, leak coder or whatever? But, um, so just get the total sum. Not too difficult, right? You've all done a for loop where you add to a sum. Get the left sum is equal to zero. I less than not. Once again, the same loop. We have to check first, so we're not adding it on. We don't add it on right away, because we have to do a check first to make sure that the left and right are not the same already. So we have to do, okay. If, um, you know, what are we even saying? If total sum minus the left sum, that would be the right sum, right? But we need to exclude the pivot, so minus nums of i, because it doesn't count for either, is equal to the left sum. That means they're the same. If right sum is equal, if right, this is the formula for right sum is equal to left sum, and we exclude the pivot, then we return the index we're at because we found the pivot. That was a good explanation there at the end. So if you watch this whole long video, you know, now you finally get it. So sorry, I took me that long to finally articulate it correctly. Uh, and then we return negative one if we don't find anything. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry it took so long. I know at the end I kind of said that correctly. What the hell? Nums of i minus one. Oh my god. Okay, you have to add the previous element. Sorry. Dang, dude. I am the king of mistakes. There you go. That's the answer. You have to do nums minus one because we skip over it at first so that we could do the check. So we add it previously. After we already checked it for pivot, then we can add it on. There you go. You should understand now. I think I explained it. It's an easy problem. You can look at it and figure it out anyway. I'm getting frustrated. I'm moving my mic around and stuff. Please just respect me and, you know, respect your community and respect your environment. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one.